master members. I guess I can't call you a guest anymore because you're going to be a member. So it's all members. That's great. One of the first things I noticed when we were arriving at my wife's cousin's house down in Texas to stay with her on my recent trip was there was some nesting birds in a basket right by her front door. And the baby birds, you could hardly see them, but you could see their little heads and their mouths were wide open, sucking in air, waiting for food, trying to survive. And when I was thinking about this speech, I thought about the evolution, not only of a child into an adult, but the evolution of parenting. So this speech is about my experience with parenting and the evolution of that and my daughter, Vanessa. Vanessa and I have a very unique bond. It's one that has withstood a lot of anxiety because I honestly did not set a great example for her as a father. I was an active alcoholic for many years and I lost the chance to be an everyday dad because primarily of my drinking, but a lot of other issues. So I basically wasn't around in this girl's life for a large chunk of it. I was around when she was small, and then I was around when she was in high school forward. So she did not see me as a father in the home during those formative years. But as she got into high school, I was back into her life. I was in Nebraska, she was in Texas, but we were in communication. And when she got to a point in her life where life in Texas was intolerable, she asked me to come live with me. And she did. She came and lived with me for a few months. And it was a very enriching experience. I got to watch her in high school. I got to watch her walk to school in Lincoln with no jacket on in the middle of January. I didn't understand that at all, but that's just part of growing up for teenagers. But this bond that we had had, it was strengthened. And I noticed that this idea of how I thought about parenting her when she was young, which was basically protecting her and telling her what to do and placing her where I thought she needed to be and guiding her with a very strong, firm and loving hand, that wasn't gonna work anymore as a teenager because she had gained independence. She had gained knowledge about life and she knew what she wanted to get out of life and she had some sort of a direction, but she still needed input from me, but not the same kind of input. So I had to start learning at that point that the old way wasn't gonna work anymore. So I was able to evolve in a limited capacity at that time, I'll be honest. I still was trying the old way and it wasn't working and our living together didn't work well. For after six months, I basically said, you need to go back with your mom because the things you're doing are threatening the way I'm trying to live. And I was trying to live sober and some of the things she was doing was not matching up with that. She was learning though about my life as well because as a sober man, there are some limitations that I had and I needed to set an example and have a level of tolerance for what she wanted to do but what I needed for my own health. She went through a period in high school where she had some mental health challenges. Uh, she had some challenges with drinking and drugs but she also had the exposure to my recovery. So she was seeing that there was, there was a possibility to have a life without alcohol and drugs and to be healthy and happy. I took her to some of my meetings. I introduced her to a lot of my friends. She has friends from her time in Lincoln that are still in recovery. So she saw that. She saw what it was like. So her struggles happened as my, as my recovery was going on. And I think that it helped her to not be enveloped by alcohol and drugs like I was. As she went forward in her life, she was one of these people that wanted to become highly educated. She's still in school, uh, still going to school, taking online courses. She was a person that was very interested in a lot of different things. So she didn't really know what she wanted to do. She wanted to work with animals. She wanted to do other things, but she hadn't really landed on her feet job-wise. She was working at retail, different types of jobs that young people get to get work experience. And then about six years ago, she landed a job that was more along the lines of a corporate type of environment and did very well at that job, had some struggles last year with it and ended up having to resign that position. So that brings us to this last year, which in her life 
and in my life have been very stupendous in both a positive and a negative way. When I say the negative way is that it's been challenging. It's been challenging for myself as a parent to watch her go through these struggles. Uh, she's married to somebody that's incarcerated. She's going through all these challenges financially and she's also going through a lot of emotional challenges with the fact that her loved one is not there with her each and every day. I, as a father, want to rescue her. I want to take that pain away, but I can't. Vanessa, my daughter, has been flapping as a teenager, learning to fly as a 20-year-old, now at 30, having to soar basically on her own. That is difficult. But she told me something years ago when she would had, was talking to me on the phone and telling me about what was going on in her life and I was in dad fix it mode. I was offering this suggestion, that suggestion. I was gonna fix everything. And she said, dad, I just need you to listen. I just need to get this out, I need to vent. So that was probably the most stupendous thing that I've learned in the last 10 years from my daughter is to allow her to fly and to be there to support her in ways that I can, not enable, support, to continue to live my life in hopefully a way that is attractive to her and to just be there, to be there when she wants to talk on the phone, to listen, to let her get this stuff out. But the idea is to let them fly, 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 and be a safe landing zone when they need to land. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you.